If you're a cyclist who rides in groups, races at any level, or simply loves to go hard on the bike, improving your VO2 max is a surefire way to keep you at the pointy end of the bunch. But what is VO2 max and how do you train it? In today's video, I'm speaking with World Tour Cycling Coach and Head of Science to Sport Girona, John Wakefield, to learn his six top training sessions that you can use to transform your VO2 max. John has been coaching the world's best cyclists for more than 15 years, taking riders to national titles and World Tour victories, and was part of the team that helped Tadej Pogacar win his two Tour de France yellow jerseys in 2020 and 2021. John now works as a performance coach with Team Bora Hansgrohe while simultaneously running the Science to Sport lab here in the center of Girona. Science to Sport offers bike fitting, rider coaching, and performance testing to amateur and professional cyclists alike. Before we get into today's video, and for anyone wondering, your VO2 max is the rate at which your body can effectively use oxygen during exercise. The better your lungs, heart, and muscles are at absorbing oxygen during physical physical activity, the higher you'll perform, and in simple terms, the fitter you're going to be. If you've been following me for a little while now, you'll know that John and I have made a number of videos like this over the past few months, designed to help take your cycling performance to the next level. But if you are new here, my name is Tristan. I'm a cyclist and photographer from Sydney, Australia, now living in Girona, Spain. I've been racing and training on the road for the past decade, and I still race here in Spain every other weekend. Last year, under John's guidance, I reached a lifetime personal best VO2 max of just under under 75, so I can personally vouch for everything that he prescribes in this video. So with all that out the way, let's get into today's video. This is six training sessions that you can use to transform your VO2 max. Enjoy. Alrighty, g'day, welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. I am back here in the Science of Sport Lab once again for the umpteenth time. Today <laughs> we're talking through VO2 max training with John Wakefield. VO2 max is, is quite an exciting side of cycling training because it's much more about performance and intensity. It's something that people like talking about and thinking about because this is the kind of level of excitement that you get when you're watching the Tour de France and yep. guys are attacking. Yeah, right they're at that VO2 limit. So we've got six different training sessions today. John's gonna to talk us through them all, but before we get into the training sessions, I just wanna ask you quickly, can you run us through what is VO2 max training? Obviously I've mentioned the intensity, but what is it about and how would you describe it uh, in, in science to sport terms? Yeah, it would basically be you want to improve your anaerobic capacity, you want to improve and extend your peak power values. Additionally to that, if you improve your anaerobic capacity and your peak power, your threshold will also increase. Okay. So you want to try, essentially get your threshold obviously as close to your peak power as possible for performance. And by doing this sort of uh, block or micro cycle of training, effectively you should have that as an outcome. In a recent video, we were actually talking about base training and building a nice wide base. But this is at the opposite end of the pyramid. This is right yeah. at the top where you're not doing long sessions of this, but it's, no. it's much more about high intensity. When do you prescribe VO2 max training or VO2 training to your athletes? Yeah, it's a good question. You would obviously prescribe it throughout the year, but um, if they're going into a kind of an important race block or a hypothetically, if we look at a, a national championship for someone or, or a peak block of racing I would start prescribing that anything from six to eight weeks out okay yeah I will ask you a little bit later on about how many of these sessions you do in a week but yeah okay so six to eight weeks yeah you've done all your base training maybe a bit of threshold stuff and then you're working up up yeah, and up correct. And up. It's sort of, uh, you, I like to use the term, you, you use them to sharpen up going into races. Okay, yeah, cool. That yeah. makes perfect sense. Alrighty, and then I guess that comes down to, let's just launch straight into let's it. Let's get then. into the meat of it. What are the sessions? <laughs> Yeah, so as uh, Tristan said, we have six for you today. They'll sort of start as a very basic and we'll kind of work up to being a little bit uglier and a little bit more complicated as we go. When you do start these sessions, what I do like to introduce with, with athletes, whether you've done them before or not, is because they are super hard to do and, and you're really at your maximal values, uh, start with a shorter duration. So something like 40 20s or 40 40s. So you've maximal effort for 40 seconds and you have 40 seconds rest. A good one 
would be two by six of those, so two sessions of six 40-40s and sort of 10 minutes rest in between. And then so along those those sort of 40 seconds on, what intensity is that? Is it a percentage of threshold, a, a percentage of maximum heart rate or a rate of perceived exertion? When you can't see out your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Uh, it, it's it's literally a, you know to to give a power value is not really correct because you will essentially typically fade during it which is normal so i like to kind of say to people it's a maximal effort a complete maximal effort that is sustainable for that duration of of interval yeah that makes perfect sense so you're going very hard for 40 seconds having 40 seconds dead, dead for 40 complete back back to life for 40 yeah cool as yeah. many times over as you can or yeah. six times six times okay. exactly. 40 seconds is a lifetime and then 40 seconds recovery is not long enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of putting it <laughs> Session number two, which builds up to session number three, is your standard two minute. I'm, I'm a real big favorite of this. That would be anything from four by two, five by two, six or eight by two minutes as you get fit and you get more accustomed to the sessions. Your rest duration between three, three and a half minutes off. Again, maximal effort that is sustainable. I often get asked, do I do the seating? Do I do it standing? doesn't really make a difference. You know, you would typically start off standing, you would finish sitting. So from that side, as long as you get the duration and it's consistent, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, cool. So spread your maximum effort over that two minutes, yeah. but make sure that you're pretty fisted by the end of the two minutes. Correct. And then you've got that three, three and a half off. Yeah, for power meter users, like you could use as a guide anything, depending on where you are in your fitness, but 115, 120% of FTP to 130. Right, cool. So that is the two minutes there done. Those are getting a little bit harder. What have you got for us for our third training session? This one at our company is very much like a holy grail of, of sessions, and that is your four minutes maximal effort. Four minutes on, typically we like two and a half, three minutes off. Exactly the same number-wise or in how many repetitions is anything from four by four, five, six or eight, depending on where you are again in your fitness. The power meter users, you can look at anything from 100. 15 to 125 percent if you can do more fantastic but that's a good kind of starting point okay yeah yeah cool so four minutes is quite a long period of time when you're at that kind it's of intensity and it's then again the life. recovery is never enough no, no never okay yeah cool as yeah. john said i think it's really important to reiterate this is dependent on where you are at in your fitness journey yeah. so don't just go out there and try and smash a bunch of four minute efforts because not only will you not hit the numbers but you'll also just come home feeling quite depleted start with the, the sort of easier sessions the 40 20s and then build your way up to the four minutes but that four minutes sounds like a very good session but i'm surprised that we're only halfway through so we've got <laughs> our fourth session what have you got yep. for us for our fourth session our fourth session is our four minutes that have been supercharged and what i like to do with that is have your standard four by four minutes like we've just discussed but then your last four intervals are four by 40 40s and you repeat that again over with the two and a half to three minutes rest in between each one of those so a combination of the four minutes and 40 40s is a good Correct. kind of uh yeah you put some serious lactate into your legs and then you're doing some yeah. serious damage to your not damage but you're doing some serious <laughs> work cardiovascular <laughs> you're doing damage you are doing but damage. it's good damage it's great damage okay cool so that's a Correct. nice a nice solid session four by four minutes yeah. on about three minutes off or so two and a half three minutes off yeah. Correct. And then some 40 40s. And as then well. you hit, hit those uh, 4 by 40 40s at the end. Yeah. Cool. Really, really good session. Yeah. Alrighty. And then that leads us into our fifth session. What have you got for the fifth session before we get to the final, the intense one? But yeah. what's one step before maximum intensity? The one I really enjoy is 33 tens. So that would be 30 seconds maximal all out sprint. You would go into directly after that, you would go into three minutes, typically a threshold. And at the end of that three minutes, a threshold would be a 10 second maximal sprint again mm -hmm. to finish. So it's almost, you kind of do a 30 second attack. You have a three minute duration pull and then 10 second attack at the end. Yeah, and you, cool. should um, you should win. Yeah, you should win. In theory, on paper, you should win. 
there again, anything from four to six of those, they, they are pretty violent. And I like to have five minutes rest in between each one of those. Okay, yeah, yep. cool. That sounds like it'll take you pretty well into the red. Like a 30 second sprint is a very long period of time to be sprinting Correct. for. To then have to settle into a threshold effort, or as you said, just above, yep. and then be able to pull out a 10 second sprint at the yep. end of it. Correct. I can imagine after a few of those, people are definitely feeling it. Yeah, you, you typically what, what I get is, there'll be a phone call and they are oh, not feeling good, like what have you. And it's because for the first two, they've blown phone numbers out the, out the water and then they just dead for the rest of them. You're like, no, you just overpaced this. Yeah. But yeah, really, really good session. Yeah, so provided you work in the right way, that is a very good session, gonna give you a good return. I've got a lot of abuse for it, which I know is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a great thing. Yeah. Okay, and that leads us up to our final session, which is the sixth session of this VO2 training. Yeah. The Holy Grail, what have you got for us for our sixth and final VO2 session? Uh, that is the standard 30 15s, so maximal sprint for 30 seconds, 15 seconds recovery, and repeat again, uh, 30 seconds, 15 recovery, and three sets of 13. So 13 by 30, 15, 10 minute recovery, repeat, 10 minutes recovery, repeat. That I'm not giving you less, I'm not giving you a softer version, you've got to do 30 15s times 13. Okay, yeah, cool. That's a it. brutal one. Just don't yep. prescribe this to me. You gotta cop some abuse if I get that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. That's a very hard session. That's yeah, a really... it, it, it is super, super hard, but great return on investment. I know we've discussed this in the past. You said that's a really good, like, sharpen up before yeah. a race, like Correct. in the week before a race or something Correct. like this. Now, just leading into uh, when you would do these sessions, or sorry, we've discussed when you would do them, but how often would people do these sorts of sessions? Say they're a month out from their key event of the season or the quarter or something like that. How often are you prescribing that they do VO2 training in amongst the other kinds of training that they might be doing? Yeah, typically, like, twice a week, I'd spread them out. What, what, what you can do is do a VO2 session followed by a pretty easy metabolic session, then recovery or a good ride, etc. But essentially you wanna get quality out of these sessions. So you wanna be able to hit the numbers, recover, the next session hit the numbers again. So you want to get that maximal stimulus. You don't want to kind of close them together or you don't want to do them continuously, say three, four a week. You may make it through the first week, but after that your quality will go and you actually kind of essentially land up doing threshold efforts. This is, it's an important one. I mean, John and I have discussed yeah. it in lots of previous videos. It's recovery is just as important as training. You know, like I think when I hit my maximum 10 minute power last year, it was just because when I first started training with you, you just gave me more recovery. And all of a sudden I could do things that I couldn't do previously because I was consistently overtrained. So if you are going to do these VO2 Good sessions, <laughs> if you are going to do these VO2 sessions, really focus on uh, making sure that they're spread out nice and yeah. evenly with your other training sessions. Yeah, as John said, yeah. no more than two a week. And, and it sounds like, yeah, only leading in the, the sort of six to eight weeks leading up to yeah. an event. Correct. And you can like add them in with, you know, as I said, some metabolic stuff or some neuromuscular sprints, etc. So you can kind of keep training, but just make sure that when you do these, as I said, they spread out and you're fresh when you, when you do them. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, cool. This is all really good advice. One thing that a lot of people have asked us, and we have had a lot of messages, a lot of emails, uh, a lot of questions, even Training Peaks is getting emails, requesting <laughs> things. One of the important things to know is that uh, John and I make these videos basically for free. But having said that, if you wanted a more complex training session, you can actually hire Science to Sport to write you a coaching program. John is a coach. He has other coaches within the Science to Sport uh, ecosystem that can coach you no matter where you are in the world. And that is the best way to get a personalized training plan is to contact science to sport have them write you a plan will maximize your time on the bike and be able to integrate with the other kinds of things you have going on so you guys will have a job i don't really have a job i make youtube videos so i can <laughs> ride my bike all the time but if you've got a job and you need to train around that job having a coach is the best way of maximizing your time on the bike when you're going out on the bike to get your maximum fitness so contact science to sport there's a link on the screen there's a link in the description and yeah we hope you guys have got something out of this video thank you once again and Pleasure. thanks for having me see you in a in another video soon I'm sure during 3015 so I'll see you <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime yelling yeah. at you <laughs> alright guys cool thanks very much go well